Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Ganesha, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules, Goose, you know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to India, where we have gone to visit a temple uh, to the Hindu god Ganesha, and we've been approached by an acolyte who has told us that if we play this ancient game and win we will win the favor of Lord Ganesha. And so, that's what we are trying to do. This is a very abstract set collection game, um, which is you know, very loosely themed on Indian mythology. And I've got to set the game up now, which means I've got to go through a few steps. First of all, I have to choose whether you're going to play the daytime or the nighttime side. And really, what that does is it changes the overall flavor for scoring. Um, for instance, blue is the most valuable. If we play the nighttime side of the board, the first blue gem is worth three, the second seven, the next four, the next five, four, three, two, and one. Whereas if we play on this side, the first gem is worth six, and then three, and then five, and then three. So basically, if you play on the day side, for all of the different colors, you get a bigger um, boost of scoring if you go early, if you are quick. Whereas the night side very slightly incentivizes you to go for later scoring because of how the numbers lay out. We're going for daytime right now. Also, each of us starts with two points. And now this is a change from the official rules uh, that came in the box, uh, because in the original rules, only player four in a four-player game gets the two points, and everybody else starts with nothing. And everybody else, over the course of the game, earns those two points passively. And I talked to the designer, he said, yeah, you know what, we're going to officially change that if we ever do a reprint or an FAQ. And so he said, go ahead and tell folks that officially everybody should just start with the two, because it's one less rule to remember. Everybody starts with two points. Although, like I said, everybody ultimately got the two points. It's just that the four players, the fourth player started and everybody else earned them throughout the game. Now it's just simpler. Everybody has them right from the get-go. Alrighty. And so we've set up that board. We have to set up the main board, which means we have to decide, are we playing with the optional spice expansion? And let's that. Let's do it. Which means we pick two of these randomly. I don't know what we're gonna get. We will get that one and that one. And we place them randomly somewhere on the board. They are not allowed to be next to each other. But otherwise, it doesn't really matter. So just do it however you want. Although the lead player is supposed to choose, but you might as well choose randomly. They are face up, so everybody knows what they are. And now, we get out the beautiful gems. These are absolutely lovely. In a two-player game, there are going to be ten that we are vying for. In a three-player game, there's an additional six. And then in a four-player game, there's an additional four. So let's put them out here randomly. One, two, three, four, five... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, there we go. And the game is afoot. All right, I am the first player. What's going to be happening is on most turns, I'm going to, or on all turns, I'm going to either take one or two ta or two gems and add them either to my treasury or one of my two destiny slots. And then optionally, at the end of my turn, I could score gems if I want, if I feel the timing is right. And uh, and then Jen will do it, and then I will do it, and then Jen will do it, and then I'll do it, and Jen will do it again. We will do this three times, which is, I, I'm the first player. I need to remind everybody that we've done round one, two, and three. And then after we've done that three times, any gems that weren't taken, go back in the sack, same for spices. New stuff comes out, and then Jen becomes the first player. So, uh, and then we will do it. A, we'll do that through a second age, and then we'll do it through a third age. And then at the end of the game, if anybody still has gems that they have not scored, we will score all remaining gems in kind of like a big final showdown. So, a big part of the game is deciding, are you going to try and score early and get more points? Because on all of these tracks, the blue, the purple, the green, the red, and the yellow, there are more points to be had if you score sooner. Or are we going to put it off and uh, score at the end of the game? Because it's cheaper to score at the end, but you might not get access to the best scoring options. All right, so that's the sitch. And I am the first player. I can grab any of these gems. Although, if I grab this gem, which has some cinnamon under it, I will get one victory point. Just straight up. So, I'd be tempted to grab this, but there's a problem. Yellow gems are the weakest. These are worth the least points. Blue gems are the most valuable. They, the first blue gem is worth six points. So I'd rather have this, especially since only one came out. And if I do this, I will see, which one is this? This is the black pepper. I have the option. You know what? Oh, I, if I did this, if I took this blue, there is no way I'm going to activate the black pepper, which says return the gem I just got and draw a random one from the bag. If this were reversed, 
If it were like this, I'd definitely want to take the most valuable gem and get a point. And it would be worthwhile, potentially, to take the least valuable, the yellow gem, but it says, return it to the bag and draw, and maybe I could turn a lowly yellow gem into a better gem. But that is not how it worked out. Sometimes the spices are very attractive, sometimes they don't really matter, there's just like an extra little bit of flavor. So what am I going to do? I, um, okay. I want the blue gem, because it's the most valuable. I would like the purple gem, because it's the second most valuable. But green gems are the third most valuable, and there are three of them out here. And so I think I am going to forego the most valuable one that I could get and get a green gem instead. And here, I'll tell you why. Every time you take a gem, you have a choice. You can either put it in your treasury. Things that are in your treasury can subsequently be scored. That's a free action you can do on your turn. Take them from your treasury, put them over here, score points. That's how you win the game. they got to be in your treasury to score them. But if you put them in your destiny slot, and you have two, one, you have two gems in your destiny, that means on a future turn, if you claim a destined color, so if I have green in my destiny and I later on a turn I get another green, then that means... I get to take that green plus an adjacent. So you get to take two instead of one. So I'm going to take this green. I'm not going to get into a situation where I can score. I'm going to set myself up so I can destiny things up like crazy. And that was my turn. I took one. It is Jen's turn. And Jen says, hmm. Well, here's the deal. If she takes a Jen or a green and puts it in her destiny, on she knows on my turn, I'll take the other and then I'll probably get that blue. Jen doesn't want that. Jen wants the blue. She's going to take this. She's going to take this. She could activate it, which again says, hey, throw this back in the bag and try to get something better, but there's nothing better than a blue gem. So she's going to ignore this spice. This spice, uh, nobody particularly loved it. Uh, nobody wanted some black pepper. It made her sneeze. So she has the same choice as me. Make it her destiny, which does her no good because there's no other blues. Or put it down here in her treasury so she is one step closer to being able to score it. And remember, scoring the first blue in the game is six points. You'll never get a better return on scoring a, a gem than the six. So is Jen going to set herself up? Here's the interesting thing. Only one blue came out. Also, um, only one uh, red and one purple came out. So chances are, in the next round, blues, purples, and reds, because there were eight of each color in this bag. When we get into the next round, after each of us has taken three turns, Jen will be the first player when we draw new stuff. And so, Jen could go on ahead and lock this up here now, and then keep it her destiny. She won't use it throughout here, but hopefully, when blues come out, she'll be set up to get um, bonus turns in the second round. So she could do that, or she could go on ahead and put it down here with an intent to score it while the scoring is good. Now, instead, she could leave it um, and grab one of these yellows. Because then, that means, hey, she could start grabbing doubles, but if she does that, she knows, I'm going to take a green and a blue. She does not want me to have that blue. She's going to take it. She could set it up for Destiny, but that Destiny won't come to play for a while, so she's just going to put it in her treasury with an eye to maybe score this sooner than later. Maybe. Okay, it is my turn. And since I was the first player, we mark that we're on to round two. And according to the original rules, where I didn't have any points, every time I rotate this, I get another point. So that's how you slowly earn the points. But again, there's no reason. You can, everybody can just get the two points right from the get-go. So I, um, we're on to round two. And you better believe I am going to grab a green because it's my destiny. And because I grabbed a green, I can grab something adjacent, which means I could get a purple or another green. Or if I come to this one, I could get a green or a, or a yellow. And if I grab this yellow, I get an extra victory point. Oh, boy. Purples are the second most valuable thing. So I would like to do that. But I'd like to do this because yellows do have a very valuable element to it. So I think I'm going to forgo the most valuable thing I could get and uh, come over here. And because I grabbed this, I just got, with my little uh, monkey, I got one extra victory point. And now, since I'm grabbing two, I've got more decisions to make. I can just put both of these in my treasury, which means I'm getting ready to score them. First green scored is five. First yellow scored is three. Or, hey, I could put this in now. I get destiny off of greens and yellows. That's not bad. Or um, I could say, hey, you know what? Let's put this in the tre uh, treasury. Let's take this, put it into this destiny, and push this out. And now I'm only destined for green. But now I've got two greens to score. 
And here's the thing I haven't mentioned. To score, um, unless you wait until the very, very end of the game, in which case scoring is free, if you score before the end of the game, you have to sacrifice one gem, and then you score all of the matching. So in this case, if I had two greens, I could sacrifice one to score the other and get five points. So you don't want to sacrifice until you've built up a few. And as long as there's a green stuck up here, I, you know, that's one less green I could put towards scoring. Now there's another thing as well. Yellows are interesting. They're the least valuable in terms of score, but you can sacrifice a yellow to score any color you want. So anyway, I grabbed these. I got one point for um, you know getting some sweet cinnamon. I'll worry about that later. And I've got to decide. Um, if I put this up here, now see, I know Jen's only going to take one because she has no destiny. She probably wants this purple. Which means, my green destiny doesn't do me any good anymore. I, I assume she's going to take that purple. But she might take a yellow so that she could do a destiny turn. So, I mean, if this green... if I, But if I assume that um, green is not going to give me any destiny, maybe it makes sense to go on ahead and bump this out so I'm in a position to score them because chances are I wasn't going to be able... Because if Jen takes this purple, my green destiny did me no good because it's by itself now. So let's say I did that. Although, wait, there's one other option I could do. I could say, hey, I'll just put this down here for future scoring. If I have two green, that means for as long as I've got two green destiny, I could take a green and anything else I want, even if it's by itself. So that's a possibility too. So I could set myself up that on the next turn, no matter what Jen does, I could do a double take. I could do a double take by grabbing a yellow or by grabbing a green, which means Jen would be tempted to take the green yeah, let's go with this. Let's go with this. Uh, I think that might work out best. That gives me the most flexibility. So that was my turn. It is now Jen's turn. And she is going to... I think she is going to go on ahead and take this purple. Because, uh, again, it's the second most valuable in the game. I'm getting more stuff, but Jen is getting higher value stuff. And is she going to make it her destiny? Which doesn't do her any good now. But remember, she gets first dibs on stuff that comes out later. And if a lot of purple comes out, she'll be happy to have that purple destiny. I think that's what she's going to do. Okay. And, um, yes, so she is done. We are on to my third and final turn of this first phase. And I will take the green. And because I was double destined for greens, even though it's by itself, I can grab anything else I want. And I will... There's a lot of yellows, but I'll go ahead and grab a red because reds are more valuable than yellows. And now here's the interesting thing. I could put it down here, or I could say, you know what, I'm done with the double green destiny. Let's go on ahead and do that. And so now, going into the next round, reds or greens will up my chances of getting double pulls. Let's do that. And now, Jen, her final turn, well, doesn't matter. There's no purple, so she's going to take a yellow. And she could just get herself... I mean, in fact, if Jen wants, she could put this down here. And because, remember how I said, you can sacrifice a yellow to score anything you want. Jen could sacrifice this yellow to score this blue. And she would be the first to score. She could do that and get six points beyond the board. But remember, she's going to be first next round. She is hoping to grab some more blues and try to do a bigger score. So she'll just take this. Although, again, she could take this up here. And that gives her the chance to draw more stuff. But you know what? We've already seen... And remember, these yellows, since nobody took them, they're going to go back in the bag. There's a good chance we'll up yellows. So, Jen has to decide. Is she going to up her chances of stuff to draw next round, but maybe yellows will or won't come out? Or is she going to get herself into a position where she can score faster? Because stuff up here lets you draw, but it doesn't let you score. Um, I think she just wants to get into a position where she can score quicker. We'll see how that goes. So that was it. We have finished the first round. That was it. Um, and... The remainder of stuff goes back in the sack. Uh, spices, they go back. Uh, Jen becomes the first player. And we go on into the second of the, of the three ages, or whatever you want to call them. Two new things come out. They are... Oh, what is this? This is Cardamon, and this is uh, the uh, Caraway. All right, and they go out randomly. And we fill up, and Jen will be first. And she is hoping to see purples next to blues so that her gamble pays off. There's a blue. <gasps> wow. That was very unlikely. There was more purples in here than anything else, and yet a purple did not come out. Ouch. 
Ouch, which means Jen will not be. Jen took a gamble. It was a reasonable gamble, but there is a little bit of luck. Um, and so that didn't work out for Jen. Hmm. All right, then. Well, Jen will make lemonade out of this lemon. She will go on ahead and take, again, the most valuable. Jen is trying to monopolize blue. It is the most valuable. So she takes this. And she gets access to the caraway. Now, this thing says... Um, but, but Jen has to activate this immediately. She doesn't have to. She can ignore it. Before she claims this, putting it in a slot, Jen can activate this. And this is basically saying she can swap stuff back and forth. Her purple is not giving her the destiny she hoped for, so she might as well do that. All right. And now she can put this wherever she wants, and so now she's got two blue. Okay. And so now she's going to be doing double duties because there's a lot of yellows out there, thanks to the caraway. So that was her first turn. It is my first turn. And I want to grab a green or a red. Um, hmm, let's see here. I think I will go on ahead and grab this green. And because I, green was destiny for me, I can get anything. I'll take another green. And I'll just go ahead and put them both down here. And I have got four green. And I've got a choice to make. I've really got five green if I want. And I think... I am going to score. Remember, this game is all about deciding, are you going to score early when you have to sacrifice gems to do it there by throwaway points? Or are you going to save up and score late? I think I'm going to score early right now. I'm going to sacrifice this yellow, which lets me score all four of these greens. Five plus four is nine, plus three is 12, plus four is 16. So plus three is 19 points. Okay, boom. That was a pretty big move. Okay. Um, and now, scoring green for the rest of the game isn't as interesting because the total points left are three, four, five, six, seven. I grabbed all the good stuff. Okay. So, but there are still green points to be had, but this green gem is a bit less attractive. Although, well, this is interesting. If somebody takes this green gem, they can use the cardamom. This cardamom says, hey, pick the most recently taken uh, thing from color and return it. So we could suddenly make green more valuable again. But anyway, Jen's going to go. And it's her second round. And what is she going to take? I think she will. Obviously, she's destined for yellow. She'll take a yellow. And she could go on ahead and get the higher red. Or she could get this green. And greens suddenly aren't as good. Although, if she takes this green and uses this, greens become a little bit better. But then we'd be tied on greens. I think... She will go on ahead and uh, grab this red up here. So, and again, she's got to decide how she locked these in. If she takes this red, um, then we both are destined for red, but she knows I'm going to take this, obviously. Or no, I might take this read, which means she could get two more. So, I mean, by doing this, she's pretty much, con um, you know, ensuring that I... Oh, oh, actually, either way, if she does this, then I might take these or I might take these, but either way, that ensures she gets another double. If she And then she's got this, which means she could score two blues. But really, she wants to wait till she scores three blues. Two blues would get her nine points. Three blues would get her 14 points, which is, the, which is basically the same as Jen had to do with four greens. So she's still saving up for that big moment. So I think she'll go like that. And uh, anyway, that was her second turn. Right, so back to... Er, er, Yes, her second turn. And back to me. And so I think I can get a green. Oh, gr I'm less interested in greens now that I've, I've blown out all the greens. So I think I'll go on ahead and take this red and a yellow. And I will say, hey, you know what? Greens, a lot of them are out of the game. I'm going to go say green is no longer my destiny. Push that down there. And so that was that. It is Jen's last turn. She will go on ahead and take a green and a yellow. And she will go on ahead and make greens a bit more valuable again. And what is she going to do with these? All right, and she knows I'm taking this last yellow. If I've, I don't think I've lost track, have I? Did I? Am, am I taking an extra turn? I don't think so. So, going into the third and final bag pull. What do I want to have for Destiny? Or does Jen want to have red for Destiny? There's one, two, three reds. So there's five reds in the bag. One, two, three, four. All right. I think red is good for Destiny. Although, red's going to be something we want to score pretty soon. 
Uh, there's. I don't think green. I, I don't think green, being a green destiny is a particularly valuable thing to do. And I think she will just go like this. There we go. So she's got a lot of stuff at the ready. She's got some variability, and that left me my last thing, which was this. And I'll go ahead and put it down there. All right. So we have finished the second round, which means. Unless I went around round too many. Uh, this is the biggest problem Jen and I have had. Even though there's this system, we get so wrapped up in the decision making, we keep forgetting to flip this. Which is why, by the way, the designer originally ha said, hey, you get a point every time you rotate this. Um, but I, I talked to him and he realized, oh yeah, that's not helping anybody remember. So, uh, And it's just creating more complexity and confusion. All right, so we got to set up one more time with some more spice. 50 bop. And, oh, alrighty, so this is a red pepper. You can, if you want to, sacrifice one victory point. Whatever you took off here, you can throw it back in the back. Or you could, wait, wait, no, this is the gambling one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you can sacrifice one point, draw a gem from the bag. If you draw a duplicate of whatever was on here, you basically get to double your take. So, it depends on what's still in the bag. Alrighty, so let's see what we get. Bippity boppity boo. There's that purple gem was looking for. Bippity boppity. And here's all the blues they've been hiding the whole game. And now they come out in force. All right. And let's see. Oh, and this is the caraway, which allows you. So basically, if somebody takes this blue, if they want to activate this, they can give the blue, which you wouldn't want to do. If, if this were a yellow, it might be worth it to give away a yellow to somebody else and get something in exchange. But um, yeah, exchange. Yeah, ex yeah, this is the exchange with another gem. Uh, oh, oh, no, no, no. This is, right, I was thinking of the one where you exchange with other players. That's ginger. This is one. If you take this blue, you don't have to take it. You can take something else. But again, so if this were a really crappy yellow, you'd say, oh, I'll take this and convert it into the blue. But, right. All right. So, all the blues came out. It is my turn. Yellow and red are my destiny, so I want to take one of those so I can get some more stuff. And the big final scoring uh, super round is coming up. Ah, folks. Ah, oh, hold on. The end is not almost here. I totally spaced. In a two-player game, we're supposed to go through 12 rounds, not nine. We're supposed to clear the mandala out four times, not three. And yet, I am about to proceed as if this was the final uh, mandala's worth of gems that we can collect. And then I'll go into the final scoring. Now, this will still give you a pretty good idea of how the game plays and how it finishes, but bear in mind, uh, we should have uh, gone through a full another three rounds before the game properly ended. So, I uh, felt I should mention that. And of course, if you were watching with the Klingon subtitles, you already knew this because Paolo pointed it out back at the beginning when I misspoke. Ugh. Again, uh, very simple little game. Pretty big goof, but still hopefully I have a pretty good idea of how the game plays. So let's get back to it. And what do I want to take? Well, I think I'll take... Oh, this is interesting. I could... What do we got? There's one, two, three, four, five. There are three more blue in this bag. What the heck? Let's have some fun. Let's go on ahead and take a red. And because that's my destiny, I'll take something adjacent. I'll take the blue. And now um, I will sacrifice one point. I mean, how many how many are in here? It's I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. If I draw a blue, I will get to keep it. Hmm. All right. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. And... Nope, it's a yellow. So I lost one point. I may regret that later if it comes down to one point. But Jen, I've never seen a game that comes down to a one point difference. So it was worth the risk, I think. And so, now, once again, I've got to decide, do these go directly in my treasury? Or do they bump existing stuff out? These are both still good destiny. So I think I'll just keep them down here at the ready. And I need to start thinking about, do I want to score? Um, because, hey, I could use this and score reds. And that means I would get the four and the three. If I had three reds, I would do it. Oh, I could have three reds and I could do it. Because I could say, hey, blue, come up here. Be my destiny. And hopefully I would get to advantage of it. Um, although I probably won't because Jen will take a bl of these. So I won't. But that means I could score these reds right now and get four plus three plus four. Boom, boom, boom. I'm sacrificing three points. The first yellow to score is worth three points. But I'm converting 3 points into um, 11 points. But on the flip side, Red Destiny is not bad, though. Because I have 2 more chances, I don't think I'm going to do it. I'm tempted, but I don't think I'm going to do it. I might... Ugh. 
Because here's the thing, if I score all three of these reds, then what are we left with? Two, three, two, one, one. Red gets really unpopular really fast. I think I am going to do it. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm going to score, sacrifice this yellow, which was three points. Red would never get better. But I'm going to get four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven more points. One, and boom, I'm up to 29. Okay. So obviously I'm going for early and mid scoring. Jen is saving up for late scoring. We'll see how that goes for her. So... That was my first turn. Um, oh, did I? And I think I did lose the point for this. All right, so and that didn't work out. Okay, Jen's turn. She would like to pull a yellow or a red, and um, right. Uh, yeah, she will go on ahead and take a red, and take a blue. Okay. And this is. So if I had reds in the queue. I or, you know, Jen might decide to score blues now because she finally has three blues she could score and get 11, 12, 13, 14 points. But here's what's going to happen. After we're all done, whoever has the fewest points, all, all of our stuff will become in our treasury. And whoever has the fewest points will go first. We will take turns putting gems um, and just scoring the next highest thing in every color. And so... Um, you you know you can have the potential to score a lot of points, but if you if you are at a case where lots of where players have a lot of the same types of colors, you're basically scoring the high points in half. Whereas if you can monopolize, and other players don't get it, you can. So you know that's what Jen's thinking about. Does she score the three biggest scores right now, or does she wait? Because she knows she's less. She will go first. She will get six. And then I might do a blue and get three, but I'm not going to do that. I'll do something else so that I can only get the five and wait for her to get a three. But the thing is, Jen has saved a lot of stuff, so she will have more control over this final uh, process. So I think, yeah, she's just going to keep on taking it. All right, so that's it. It is my turn, my second turn. And hey, blue is my destiny. And I think I'll take this red... Because I'm going to want to compete with Jen on all the different colors. Because now we're getting to the point where we're, we don't care about mid or early game scoring. Now we're trying to position ourselves for that late score off. And so we want to have a variety of things. And do I just put these in my treasury or do I change? This blue doesn't do me any good. This red doesn't do me any good. They're both gone, so it doesn't really make any difference. The only reason to do it would be if I, say, wanted to do this so that I could score something. But I think we are both to the point where we're not going to be scoring anything more anymore. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe. We'll see. So anyway, so I'm going to do that. I'm not going to score anything. It is Jen's turn. Jen still likes yellows. She had that, um, you know, the... Yeah, she's been saving up. This is her time. She'll take the yellow, which means her destiny lets her get a purple. And she will put this purple down here. And again, she's got to decide. She could go on ahead and do this. And now she could score reds, she could score purples, she could score blues, she could score greens. And here's the deal. We know I'm probably going to take a purple or a green and then Jen's going to get the other one. I think Jen's just all out. She's not going to have burned anything. She's all scoring at the end. We'll see how that works out. My last turn, do I want the last purple, which are worth more points, or do I want the last green, which are worth less points? I'll take the last purple. And, um, and I could score stuff because I could do this. Um, oh, that is interesting. I could do this and score the six now and take that from Jen because Jen is going to score that six. She's got all these. I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to sacrifice this and score the six now and keep Jen from getting the best one. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll see how well that goes. Oh, I wish I'd had this available. Wait, did I? What did I have? I took a purple. Oh, I used that to bring this down. All right. Say love you. We'll see how it goes. All right. So I just grabbed the best uh, space, and it is Jen's turn, and that's it. Jen chose to score nothing, and now we get into the final. All of our destiny becomes Jen is last in turn order, so she will go first. It's 2 to 35. Let's see how this plays out. Jen wants to get the best return she can on everything. She will score one of her purples to get a 5. One, two, three, four, five. And now, I don't want to score purple because it's three. I want to wait for it to be four. I, If I had a yellow, I would score that because it's the best I could do. I will score green. This is the best chance for screen, green, and I will score four. One, two, three, four. It is Jen's turn. Um, I took the last best good, and right. So, 
Now, purple is weak. She'd rather make me. So Jen has control. She has a lot of stuff she can wait. She'll do the best yellow ever there was. One, two, three. And it is my turn. Now, I can. I have to score. I can't skip. So I get three points for a blue, getting her to that five. Three points for a purple, getting her to the four. Or two points for red, getting her to the three. I think I will score just the two. One, two. And now, Jen has to give me one of these better. No, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. Because she's got enough yellows to make me wait. So no, it doesn't make sense for me to do that. One, two. <sighs> yeah, Jen's got all the control because she waited. So let's go on ahead. Well, I know this is, you know, this is fate accompli. I didn't save enough. We'll see how this plays out. I'll get one, two, three. Then Jen's just going to make me wait. She'll get two. One, two. Then Jen is going to make me... Uh, yeah, you know, you know, I'll, I'll do the the two red, and then Jen says, "Oh, I've still got more. I'm doing lousy, but she's forcing me to take the bad blue so she can get the good one. So I just got two for that, and then um, or oh no no that we did All right. So now I'm doing this and getting one two three, and I'm done. And now Jen says the rest is mine. Let's see if it adds up. All right. So she gets five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that puts her up to 24. She gets one more yellow, 25. She gets uh, four, one, two, three, four. She gets three plus two is five, one, two, three, four, five. And she gets two greens, a uh, three and a two, and that's one, two, three, four, five. Jen loses. She saved up for the big. Jen never sacrificed any of her Dems any of her gems. So she got maximum use out of it, but because I jumped early, I take the win at 47 to 39 in Ganesha. And that, folks, was a run through. If you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I in the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.